Number 22. Which of the following molecules or ions contain polar bonds? All right. Pretty simple enough, but I guess we got to figure out how to do it, right? So I will tell you guys, we need to find out which one out of these seven contain polar bonds. So that goes back to electronegativity, right? If um, a molecule or an ion contains polar bonds, it needs to be in this type of bond type group, polar covalent which means that the electronegativity difference between the two elements of that certain bond has to be between 0.4 and 1.8. So keep that in mind. We are going to be using this information for the whole uh, question, all right? And just know that whenever they talk about bonds instead of molecules or compounds, a bond is just talking about the individual um, attraction between atom number one, so I'll just put A number one, with another atom, A number two. All right, so they're not talking about the compound as a whole, just the specific bond, which contains electrons, right, between one atom, which I can represent as in yellow, and then the other atom, which I will represent as blue. All right, so for this question, you don't really need to know how to draw the Lewis structures per se but you just have to have an overview as to what's going on here in order to answer the question. Lewis structures, I think, come up in section four of this chapter, so hang tight for those. These I'm not going to focus on drawing the Lewis structure exactly how they are. We just need to get an overview. So for A, it tells me that I have O3. Now, O3 is ozone, as a little side note, right? So it's part of the ozone layer that you always hear about in the news. So O3 is ozone. Now, we don't really specifically need to know how it's bound, but it's, it's basically just three oxygens tied together. So the general consensus would be something about the lines of just having three oxygens tied together, right? And now all you're looking at is the individual bond because we want to know if they're polar bonds. So it looks like this bond is from oxygen to oxygen right? And this bond is from oxygen to oxygen. So it doesn't really matter which bond we talk about. All of the bonds here are oxygen to oxygen. So let's find out the electronegativity difference between these bonds. So from oxygen to oxygen, oxygen's electronegativity is here. Oxygen's electronegativity is 3.5. So 3.5 and 3.5. Now, how do we find a electronegativity difference? It's simple. You just subtract the two electronegative numbers. Now, just know that your electronegativity difference is always going to be a positive number. So when you do that, it's just easier to subtract the higher electronegativity number minus the lower one to get the positive number. But if you ever get a negative, just know that it's the absolute value of that. But in this case, 3.5 minus 3.5 is zero. And if we do the same thing here for this bond, they would be zero as well because 3.5 minus 3.5 is zero. So the electronegativity difference for O3 for the bonds is zero. That does not fall between 0.4 and 1.8. This would not be in this group. This would actually be in this group. It would be less than 0.4, which is not a polar bond. It's a nonpolar bond. This pure covalent is the same thing as saying nonpolar. So A is not it. This one would not contain polar bonds. Now let's look at B. S8. All right, well, we don't really need to know what S8 looks like. It actually looks like an octagon with eight sulfurs, kind of like how an octagon looks like this, right? So in this case, at every connection, you would just have a sulfur all around, sulfur, sulfur, circles. Say that 15 times fast, right? But when it comes down to it, all the bonds are technically a sulfur bound with another sulfur. And sulfur's electronegativity is 2.5. So I have 2.5 here, 2.5 here. If I subtract the two, I get the same response as what oxygen had, right? Zero. 
And once again, ox, uh, zero does not fall between 0.4 and 1.8. So B is out. Next, we have O2, 2 minus. So let's see. For C, O2, 2 minus, but how are these bonds formed, right? Well, I just have literally two oxygens, right? There's two oxygens here, and those are the only elements, so it has to be something as far as oxygen bound to another oxygen, right? Because that's the only two elements here. So, just like before, oxygen is 3.5, and the oxygen is 3.5, so if we subtract them, we get zero. So there is no electronegativity difference here. This would also be zero, so that's out. D, NO3 minus 1. Now this is where it gets a little complicated, but I know you guys can do it, right? We don't need to know the specific fluid structure, but we kind of need to know what's going on here. It looks like there is one nitrogen which is surrounded by three oxygens. And side note, the central atom for an element will always be the least electronegative out of the elements that you have. So since nitrogen is electronegativity of three, oxygen is 3.5, nitrogen would be in the middle, surrounded by three oxygens. The only exception to the rule is hydrogen. Hydrogen can never be in the middle. It will always be on the outside. So in this case, we have three bonds, one, two, and three, and they're all technically an N bound with an O. So I can simplify that, right? I just have three of these bonds. So now let's see if that bond is polar. Well, nitrogen is 3.0, oxygen was 3.5, so when we subtract them, take the absolute value, and it, you would get 0.5 as your difference. Oh, and 0.5 is between 0.4 and 1.8. So what do you think? This is actually polar covalent. So these would be a polar covalent bond, polar bond. So this one would be one of them. That would have polar bonds because the electronegativity difference is between 0.4 and 1.8. Next, I'm going to put E over here. We have CO2. So for this question, don't worry about what the Lewis structure specifically looks like, but just kind of get the drift. I have carbon with two oxygens. The least electronegative goes in the middle. Carbon is 2.5, oxygen is 3.5. So carbon would be in the middle bound to oxygen. So in this case, it looks like you have two of the same bonds. You have two CO bonds, right? CO over here and then CO over here. So I just gotta find out the electronegativity difference between that bond. Carbon was 2.5, oxygen was 3.5, you subtract the two, take the absolute value, you get a electronegativity difference of 1.0, and that is between 0.4 and 1.8. So this compound, CO2, does contain polar bonds. So E is also part of the answer. F which I will put over here, is H2S. Okay, so we have hydrogen and sulfur. Least electronegative element goes in the middle, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen always goes on the outside. So since there's only two elements here, sulfur has to be in the middle, surrounded by hydrogen. We're not worrying about how to write the Lewis structure per se, just the general idea. So it just seems that in this case, there's two SH bonds. There's one right here with this hydrogen, and then there's one right here with this hydrogen. So all I gotta do is just find out the electronegativity difference between the SH bond. Sulfur was 2.5, hydrogen is 2.1. If we subtract them, we get 0 0.4. And technically, 0.4 is between 0.4 and 1.8. So this one would be a polar covalent bond. So F would make the cut. And then last but not least, we have G. I'll put G over here. BH4. So remember, hydrogen is never in the middle. So it has to look like boron is surrounded by four hydrogens. Right? 
So technically, I just have four BH bonds, right? And I'll show you them here. One, two, three, and four. So we just got to find the electronegativities for these. Boron is 2.0. Hydrogen was 2.1, right? Hydrogen's over here. And if we subtract them, we get 0 0.1 as our difference. That is not between 0.4 and 1.8. It's less than that. So this would not be classified as polar bond. All right? So that's the answer for 22. And yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I hope this helped. Remember, we weren't doing the specific Lewis structures in this case, just learning how to draw the general blueprint of them and then finding out the electronegativity differences. All right? So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. If it did, click the subscribe button. I would thank you for that. And I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.